G'day, it's Clint here, and let's talk about traveling with rheumatoid arthritis with confidence so that you don't worry about traveling and you're on top of it and planned. And every single time you go to travel, it's not a stress, you're completely in control. In this video, I'm going to share uh, the preparation stage for travel. I'm going to talk about what foods to take, what to do on the airplane, what to do when you get to the airport at the other end or on, uh, on the layovers and also how to prepare for time zone challenges and also a couple of supplements to take as well. Okay, let's get started today. First of all, with the preparation for the trip. The first thing you wanna do is prior to make sure that you order vegan meals on the trip, uh, on the airplane. Now, these vegan meals are usually pretty good these days. And you'll often get like the little standard little special meals. Uh, they'll normally come first to you because you've ordered a special meal. And the special meals always come first. And then inside the special meals, which are vegan, you'll normally get things like potatoes, always rice, often curries, uh, things like that, steamed vegetables. And so I've noticed over the years flying a lot from the United States and also to, to Australia, um, sometimes to Asia, that the foods are pretty, pretty good. Um, and we're going to talk about some alternatives here if you're not yet able to eat those foods, if you haven't done our program yet and you can't eat those foods yet with confidence and without symptoms, then in those instances you'll uh, be able to switch to bring it yourself uh, foods which I'll talk about in a second. So on the plane you will get those types of foods and they are normally pretty good. The airlines are much better these days with the special meals compared to what they were like when I used to do this even 10 years ago. Okay, so in so that's the preparation, okay? You gotta do this in advance. The airlines can't be told when you get on the plane that you want a special meal, it's, it's game over. Okay, so in terms of the preparation for, uh, for foods, what you wanna do is, um, pack the following things. So things that travel well, that aren't messy. All right, so that's bananas. Bananas are a fantastic uh, travel food. Um, again, everything I list here, if you can't eat it, go through the program, you'll be able to eat it. Uh, so we also want to take some pitted dates. So these are medjool dates, and you can get some that are already pitted. So again, you get a nice, travel friendly container and something that's convenient and easy to snack on. So they're gonna provide sort of snack level stuff alongside also pistachio nuts. Now you can get pistachios from this brand, this brand, uh, Kirkland in the US, which do shelled pistachios. Super, super helpful. They're a little pricey, but we buy them here in bulk. And when you buy them in bulk, um, shelled like this uh, not only is a little bit more cost effective but they this brand is amazing the pistachios taste phenomenal okay so make sure you uh, get yourself some of those as a snack and then but the bulk of your calories can come from um, little pre-packaged oatmeal so these are just sachets of oats and the ingredients in these ones is uh, just 100% oats with a little bit of cinnamon and brown sugar. So you can, of course, and preferably buy oats with no flavoring, no, nothing on them, right? Which is what I do at home. But with traveling, you may want to do some compromise because when you're out and about, it's better to cheat on program foods that maybe you haven't gotten to yet than cheating off the program. So traveling introduces so many new variables that you're better off, again, to stick with at least a, a, a sort of a, a pathway that you're heading towards anyway than getting completely off the path. So if you don't typically um, eat the oatmeal, um, or you don't normally put brown sugar or cinnamon for whatever reason, they're not that big a deal. Uh, don't worry, because you're better off cheating ahead on the plan than cheating off the plan. So um, we've, oh, and the other thing is uh, mandarins. 
So I don't have any with me, but uh, you guys know what a mandarin looks like. So bananas, mandarins, pistachios, packets of oatmeal and dates. And where you're going to get the, um, how you're going to cook the oatmeal is at the airport. So let's talk about at the airport. All right. So we're at the airport now. We're either about to get on the plane and let's say you've had to drive for an hour to get to the airport and it's an international flight and you've got to wait three hours before, uh, get there three hours before takeoff. So it's four hours. You're already getting hungry before you even get on the plane. So that's where your oatmeal's come in. I would take a whole box, just buy a pack of 10 and then take the whole box, just open them up. Then what you do is you empty the sachet contents into a coffee mug or a container from a coffee shop at the airport. Then you just ask for boiling water, get a large cup of boiling water. And, and then when you get that boiling water, which they'll often provide for free, you then just pour that into a cup. So um, take yourself actually a, uh, a nice hard plastic cup that can handle hot water. And you then put your oats in first and then pour the hot water or the boiling water from the cafe at the airport into the oats and they're ready to go in two or three minutes with a spoon that you bring with you or a plastic spoon from any of the outlets at the uh, at the airport okay now at the airport you can also eat from two different types of restaurants or pop-up stores you know they're little versions of these places restaurants <laughs> is a little bit of a, uh, a uh, generous term from the Mexican places and throughout the US, there's always Mexicans, right? Mexican places, <laughs> no, good. Yeah, Mexican places. Okay, so what we wanna do is uh, get a bean burrito. So in the bean burrito, ask them to hold anything that's stir fried in oil. So we wanna hold things like stir fried veggies or stir fried mushrooms. So acceptable in the burrito are things like, of course, the beans and the rice and the salsa. So that's good. Guacamole, go for it, even if it's got little bits of chopped up onion chives, all good. Okay, again, cheat further down the program than cheat off the program. And then we've got the, the tortilla. Now, if you can't eat the tortilla because you're afraid it's got some oil in it, and that's a very, very good consideration, and you haven't been able to tolerate a little bit of oil yet, or don't want to because you're in a safe zone with your body and you don't want to risk things, then just get a bowl burrito, burrito bowl. Okay, so they serve it to you in a bowl, same ingredients, but without the wrap. Happy days. Okay, don't get the tortilla chips. They're, uh, they're uh, being cooked in oils. The other restaurant you can go to is a Japanese restaurant. Now at the Japanese restaurant, there's one more thing I, I haven't mentioned yet that you can take with you. Uh, well, actually, hang on a second. So at the Japanese restaurant, you can simply order a serving of rice, steamed rice, and you can get their miso sachets and put that into the um, white rice. And then you can get your boiling water either from them or from someone else, and you can add some water to that. And then you've got in our program, we call this the mega miso soup. So it's simply rice with miso paste and water in it to about a two third full or three quarter full. So then you've got this salty, delicious rice based meal with probiotics. So it's a really good thing to eat um, when you're out at restaurants. And in fact, I invented that at a Japanese restaurant in, I think it was Nagasaki when I was in Japan um, on a, getting off a cruise ship, like probably seven years, maybe no longer, be like, nine years ago. All right, so that's a mega miso soup. Of course, you can get white rice from other outlets as well, but often at the bean burrito place, they put oil in their rice. Would you believe most of the places, except the Japanese places do not, okay? So the rice is better at the Japanese places. And then you travel with you if you want a miso paste. Why would you do this? Well, A, the quality is much better. It's going to have genuine uh, uh, healthy bacteria. And number two, it doesn't contain bonito flakes, which is a tiny trace amount of fish that they put in a lot of the packet misos at the restaurants. All right, so you've now got your snacks. You know how to eat at the airport. 
and on the plane you know what foods are going to be delivered to you because you've pre-ordered them and then on the plane you want to move about whenever you're not resting get up walk around make sure you keep your body active if there are stretches that you frequently do that help your body you can do them at altitude the planes big planes international flights everything's really steady with very little turbulence and you can stand there and do postures test your balance on one leg if you're doing anything like that but you can totally do your exercises on the plane uh, and get them done in between rest the only supplement i recommend whoops uh, is probiotics and so i always travel with probiotics these are my prevention strategy against getting run down picking something up because you run down and tired and these ones you can look at the brand if you want uh, these are the ones that i like there are many different brands obviously of probiotics but the reason that i choose carefully with my probiotics is because a lot of research has been done on specific strains and rheumatoid arthritis and this one and another product that i've actually run out of so i can't show you that one at the same time together they combine to cover all the strains that have been shown in the scientific literature to be beneficial for those folks uh, who have inflammatory arthritis okay so um that's that's what i like to do so take those with me as well and i probably do more dosages of probiotics than I what I otherwise would at home just for insurance reasons and when you're getting once you're on the plane start thinking about the new time zone so we our, our bacteria our, our microbiome actually can experience a jet lag itself we want to start trying to move our our, our future pace our thoughts and actions towards the future time zone. When you got a massive international flight like we have tomorrow, flying from Sydney to uh, Orlando, Florida, it's a total of about 25 or 26 some hours of total door to door. And so with that amount of disruption, um, you're, actually, you know, you're gonna end up upside down um, for a few days at the other end. So I don't like to sort of be watching tons and tons of movies when I know that where I'm going in just 12 hours mid-flight, I'm meant to be totally asleep at that time. It's hard because we're ingrained into our circadian rhythm from where we're coming from, but to the extent that it's possible, try to lean into the new time zone as early as you can. Start thinking about it and acting on it to the extent that it is possible. And then the final thing um, I want to convey is that in terms of big picture, it's okay to travel. You are not going to unravel all the wonderful work that you've done in reducing symptoms by going on a big trip. If you do the things that I've just shown you, and it's crucial to be uh, on a defensive mindset when we travel because we're exposed to so many people constantly at the airport and on the plane and we're run down and we're exposed it's particularly if you're taking medications or something which are immunosuppressants this adds to the concern however it's okay to travel and travel should be encouraged travel is exciting travel is uplifting it broadens the mind new experiences creates memories for life so do not shut down travel. Use these strategies to travel successfully. Okay, the next thing is you can travel with confidence. Doing these things isn't bulletproof you from, from having some symptoms at the other end, but I can tell you that traveling has never been a source of disruption to my health, ever. And I've traveled a lot, a lot, okay? So, um, it's never been something that has has has, uh, has really unraveled my health maintenance plan. And then the last thing I want you to to do is to just um, actually put all this into action next time you travel and let me know how you go. Love to hear feedback on it. Um, but but do all these things and you'll travel with confidence and it'll be great. We're, our flights tomorrow we got it under control. If you don't need to do all this because you feel really robust and resilient, 
good for you. But I, you know, I cover all bases. I eat burritos. That's what we have at the airport. We don't go to the Japanese, but um, well, I used to. I used to. Um, but we just hammer down burritos as a family at the, at whatever airport we're at. Um, but I take all my little snacks and everything anyway, because uh, sometimes um, the vegan meal on the meal, a vegan meal on the plane, which I always eat, is insufficient because I eat a lot because I exercise a lot. Okay, so with that, happy traveling. And if you aren't um, able to eat anything that I've described here and you've got food sensitivities which restrict you from enjoying these foods or lots and lots of different plant-based foods, then uh, make sure, again, you jump into the Patterson program where we can support you transform your current state of uh, food sensitivities and pain and move you through a proven process to be able to give you that new lease of life where you're able to eat foods again that you used to love before they triggered you and you're able to have a much healthier and happier life with far less pain. Well, we made it and there were a few variations as normal. When you're traveling, there's things that happen that are unexpected. Uh, we forgot the bananas, we forgot the pistachios, we forgot mandarins, or oh, we didn't have any actually. Um, there was no Mexican in Sydney and the food was oily, but we uh, adjusted and made modifications. Whenever there's oily food and it's all your options and there's no salad, well there was a little salad which is great, make sure you always at least have some oranges or orange juice because that helps to neutralize the lipid, the lipid peroxidation that occurs when you have uh, heated oils. I hope this video is helpful. I gotta get the family onto the shuttle. We'll see you again soon.